Welcome back. This is KBC News Check and we are looking at the state of politics in the country. In the first hour we have been looking at the low voter turnout. Uh, IBC did release the numbers yesterday and they are startling to say the least. Uh, less than even 30% of uh, their target has been met. Two million. Uh, people they had targeted in this by the second week they have not been able to actualize that but away from that there are still more politics happening in the country and uh, we do remember yesterday the council of governor governors led by martin nyaga wambora who is the cog chair talked about we need an additional 380 billion shillings from the initial 370 that is the equitable uh, share from the national government well is it practical his own words is that the economy is picking up slowly but surely but experts have warned that the covid pandemic we might even take a couple of years before we recover. So that is exactly what we are going to be looking at plus of course uh, ODM leader is at the mountain of course uh, meru and embu um, being part of uh, the places that he intends to take his campaigns and also we are looking at also the dp president uh, deputy president william ruto who is at the coast but perhaps to begin us before we, we delve into the politics uh, of uh, the two leaders plus orca of course uh, we have uh, somebody who is affiliated to one of the parties in orca here fred as the Secretary General of Third Way Alliance Party, I do remember you have been championing for additional resources to counties. And now the government, the, the governors talk about 381 billion to be added on top of the 370 billion that they receive from the National Treasury. First, is it workable? And it's practical a, 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 for that matter? It's, it, it's, it's workable. The pr practicality depends on two aspects. Number one, if you look at the objects of devolution, one of the objects of devolution was to ensure that we enable the counties manage their own affairs and their development. Mm. And if you look at the, what we call uh, equitable share and other financial laws, the criteria that is followed in division of revenue, one of those criteria is to ensure that the county governments have enough resources mm -hmm. to manage their affairs. And therefore, to that extent, it is important that the county government have enough money so that they can achieve the objects and principles of the devolved system as contemplated in law. Mm -hmm. Now, if I remember, the Constitution in Article 2 or 3 also pegs the division of that revenue at at least uh, uh, equitable share at f at least 15 percent mm. and it says it must be of the most recent audited accounts so 15 percent mm. of the most recent recently audited account not of the collection mm. parliament again where mushman abulindo and the uh, friends sit mm. we have had an issue of backlog of audited accounts and if you're going to divide revenue based on the most recent audited accounts, as contemplated in Article 203, sub Article 2, mm -hmm. then it means that if there is a backlog in audited accounts, then county governments will forever and ever receive what is not their share. And that's why our party decided that let's look at ways of how we can enhance equitable share to the counties. Mm -hmm. Recently, we saw mm -hmm. the proposal of uh, amending the uh, the division revenue bill mm -hmm. to at least 30 yes mm -hmm. and that bill is in the senate mm -hmm. i want to believe that is step towards the right direction mm -hmm. so that we don't talk about the uh, the minimum requirement in the constitution of f at least 15 percent mm -hmm. but we start advancing mm -hmm. the need to increase resources in the counties mm -hmm. the constitutional amendment bill 2020 mm -hmm. proposed vividly mm -hmm. in one of the sections that at least 35 percent mm -hmm. and even went further and said in the situation that the audited accounts are not current then they can divide that money based on what is collected nationally mm -hmm. you get my point mm -hmm. so that means there was a very good plan to not to starve county governments of revenue mm -hmm. i saw the letter from uh, my good friend governor ambola mm -hmm. 
that the county government, the, the, the chair, council of governor, they would now demand mm -hmm. of additional, is it 380 yeah, 380 uh, billion? Yes. In addition to the 370 that the, the equity share that have been given by uh, national government, I mean the national uh, assembly now, yes. the, 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 the revenue that was divided. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, mm -hmm. that is going to take that money to around 700 billion. Yes. The question is, where is the source of our money? The source of our money is from revenue collection by KRA. Okay. What is the target? Did KRA achieve the target? The answer is no. And if they achieve it, then it might be minimal, you know, slightly below. Yes. So, for me, I think while we really have to respect the provisions of, uh, of law in object of devolution mm -hmm. and the criteria, mm -hmm. then there's also the aspect of where the money is coming from. Then, the last one, there's the aspect of what has been devolved before. How have you used what have been devolved before? Mm -hmm. Can it stand on its own? Is there something to show for? I can tell you without fear of contradiction that if you read the Auditor General report, in all the 47 county, there has been misappropriation of funds in one way or another. There has been a recommendation at the bottom of that report of what steps should be taken as per the Auditor General, yes. who is the only officer of government, constitutional officer, that is mandated to ensure and check that the money has been used legally and lawfully but today we have governors demanding for additional 380 billion while the development in the county government can only be seen at the county headquarters our party said that the only way that we are now going to ensure this we must adopt the word as the primary unit of accelerated development so that we start measuring development at the world level and we see no, hospitals yes, yes hospitals mm -hmm. road electricity market in words, in words. Mm -hmm. and that way if the governors can demonstrate then they can have a right to say we need additional revenue Notwithstanding the constitutional requirement that there must be enough money for the government, county governments to function. Now, today the county governments have done well to an extent. Mm -hmm. When you go to Wajia, you go to Garissa, you go to Isiolo, you can see, tam you see tamak roads, you can see buildings, you can see the people doing much better. Mm -hmm. But how about now other counties also demonstrate that for sure, they deserve additional. Moshima Nabulindo talked about equalization fund mm -hmm. that is given to ASAL counties. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that equalization fund, mm -hmm. it is a percentage of a national collection, I yeah. think 0.5%. Mm -hmm. The uh, Turkana that receives, I think, the, the largest share, I think after Nairobi. It's around 15 uh, billion, right? 15 uh, billion. If, 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 financially, yeah. Look at the, 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 the mass, uh, the, the area in terms of mass, uh, the requirements in that region uh, for the nine years, what they have received. Mm -hmm. What can they say that they have done with whatever they received so that they deserve more? You know, that is the question mm -hmm. that the public yes, are yes. asking. Yes, and well, yes. we also know that we have devolved corruption majority of some of these governors have been mentioned one or another so the public who sits back and ask from their taxation mm. that the money the government collects from them and that goes to the counties how much more should we be robbed how much more should we be stolen from yes. that is the question that is lingering in our minds yes. but i am confident mm -hmm. as a believer in the constitution and as a believer in the objects of devolution that we need more money but that money must be accounted for to the last penny so that when you go back to parliament mm -hmm. when they are uh, appropriating funds or when they are dividing revenue between levels of government mm -hmm. they can actually say for sure our county government can now demonstrate that in homa bay county we have got wards that are doing development okay. in kirinyaga county okay. we have got these and these mm -hmm. and then now they can div i mean um, uh, divide that revenue without putting so much obstacles okay of course uh, moshimua you uh, yes. uh, very good points raised by the sector yes. here yes and i'm quite sure yes at the end of the day if at all any <coughs> money is going to be added to counties yes. in equitable share yes it's gonna land in parliament what's your take on that uh, thank you very much uh, uh Moshimua for being elaborate about the devolution issue mm -hmm. i think he has uh, uh, exhaustively brought out the issue very eloquently mm -hmm. Um, first, 
I, I would like to say that actually I'm a supporter of devolution. Mm. I believe in devolution and I know it's through devolution that this country is going to see development in various sectors. Um, the, the additions, all the requests, anything to do with the money will come through parliament. And uh, we have two houses, we have the Senate and the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, both houses have an opportunity to look at all those uh, appropriations mm -hmm. and then make decisions as it may. But the biggest problem with the devolution, as Mishimua said, is we devolved corruption from the national level mm -hmm. to the county level. Mm -hmm. All these counties, there is a big problem of corruption mm -hmm. everywhere. There is a big problem that these governors, some governors actually live like the lords, kings, actually. Yes. <laughs> like kings, mm -hmm. and they are untouchable because they control a lot of resources, yes. which is unaudited. I'm saying unaudited because mm -hmm. maybe the controller, uh, the general uh, controller here, mm -hmm. the auditor general, does not have the capacity to police each and every county at that close range. So in as much as they do the audit, uh, still yes. money still ends up in the wrong hands yes. or disguised in other projects. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have so many white elephant projects. Mm -hmm. We yes. have so many fictitious projects. We have so many uh, things that cannot trips, be explained. Uh, remember there's yeah, <laughs> there a lot of overseas trips and we are and having the we COVID can't understand lockdown. What they are going to benchmark yes. in Italy <laughs> yes. from Kakamega County. Yes. I, I mean, it, it, is, it does not make sense to Kenya why you would pay a hundred million yes. for members to go and benchmark mm -hmm. on how to build a toilet yeah. you know some so many things mm -hmm. so we, uh, in the wake of those things mm -hmm. how do you convince kenyans mm -hmm. that we need more money do you need more money for benchmaking uh, benchmarking or whatever it is mm -hmm. they do mm -hmm. do you need more money uh, to employ your cronies do you need more money to do roads that actually go to only your home Mm -hmm. So there are so many things that need to be streamlined mm -hmm. fast before uh, the governors can ask for more money. And what they are asking for actually is abnormal. Mm -hmm. They are asking for 380 billion. Yeah, 81 actually. 81 billion. Yes. From 370 billion, yes. total will be 780 plus yes. billion in a financial year. We don't have that capacity as a country. To pump that money mm -hmm. in uh, our counties at this point. But Moshimua, they, they've also MPs yes. have also said that uh, yeah. the NGCDF is quite uh, small. They need more money now. Yeah. These governors, they want more money. Yes, and yeah. all that is going to end up in parliament. Presidents, if governors are given that money, mm -hmm. of course members of parliament we shall also want more. Because because the governors will be doing so much and the constituents will put us on mm -hmm. uh, pressure at why that road was done by the governor. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done this classroom and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't open that window until we are ready as a country to fund all these activities. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, lastly, I don't have actually a problem mm -hmm. with the amount of money taken to the counties. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with what this money does in the counties. Okay. Right now, mm -hmm. the health system the health sector which was devolved mm -hmm. it has collapsed in the counties totally mm -hmm. go to any public hospital in the county it's a disaster mm -hmm. there are no medicine there are no doctors doctors are not paid everything is just in a chaos mm -hmm. so one would ask where is the money this is a critical uh, sector that is supposed to receive a high percentage mm -hmm. why would a governor take 80 percent of the allocation and put on the roads and take two percent to put in the health sector mm -hmm. are we investing in roads or in human beings okay okay let's jump yeah. jump uh, yeah. kindly weigh in on that yeah. and still on the same if at all you become an mp you join the bandwagon of uh, saying the ng ngcdf is quite quite little we need more more money on the same okay. looking at uh, what ngcdf has done and especially where you're vying yeah. sure. do you think that there should be an addition as governors uh, 
well, the request I, I, for 381 sorry, I'll come I'll come to that but allow me to weigh in on the, on this the the county government's revenue mm -hmm. unless you don't live in this country for you to ask for money mm -hmm. Hospitality industry is affected. The tourism. It's almost it's I mean, quite, quite collapsed. Everything, yeah. you know, that we are talking about. You see also traveling. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have so much that has been affected by COVID. COVID is still going to be with us here. Mm -hmm. If you look at the property market, for example, the offices. I mean, most people currently now are choosing to, to work in their own homes. Remember that the, 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 the KRA collects money from the, the, the property market, the name it anything mm -hmm. that has been affected by COVID and if you look at the projections people are talking about 2025 of recovery all over the world mm -hmm. so it means if anyone is asking for money for example you know they're talking about 2020 2022 2023 um, financial year for example yes. that will not be achievable mm -hmm. I agree again with Moshimua that at the end of the day as leaders of those counties they should be able to account for what they have done mm -hmm. okay number two when you're asking for extra money which is uh, double what they were receiving then we should ask ourselves is the national government going to devolve some of the other, jobs, services. Uh, the other services that they do have because mm -hmm. therefore you know I mean you cannot ask for uh, extra money without exactly what is that money going to be for mm -hmm. so that is that is one of the things that I wanted to touch on now when you're talking about the the, the, the CDF money mm -hmm. in my constituency for example mm -hmm. I can I can tell you that you are able to see projects that have been completed mm -hmm. for me i don't i don't have any problem if for example you know it will be added maybe a double or anything like that but mm -hmm. at the end of the day if you go to every constituent you'll see like for mps they are more audited actually than the county governments because if they are giving bursaries they have to make sure that they all the bursaries if it is 30 percent 40 percent of the cdf money that they get definitely they have to make sure that that money is given out mm -hmm. We are talking sometimes about bursaries, you know, that are given by county governments, mm -hmm. and they hardly account for this money that they have been able to do it. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the <coughs> the CTF, if you look at uh, building of schools, for mm -hmm. example, or classes, almost every constituency, if you go today, they have done something, meaning at least they can be able to count. Remember, we are talking about uh, 100 million shillings. I can tell you, for example, you know, in, in Nandi County, for example, I think they are receiving up to 7 billion. Mm -hmm. If you divide the 7 billion by the six constituencies, you're talking about a billion per constituency. If this money was, for example, in the constituency level, how much development, if you are able to see the 100 million, how much can a billion do? Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that we should be able to debate as Kenyans mm -hmm. so that we understand that the money that comes does not belong to the governor. The money that comes does not belong to an MP. It belongs to the people. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the people themselves should be able to understand, instead of looking at these leaders as small gods, mm -hmm. you know, that they have to go and beg for, for services to be done mm -hmm. when it is their right. Mm -hmm. When they learn about that, then I can tell you that this country will change Troy. Indeed. And, and something that I've picked from uh, the three of you guys who are politicians is yes. that you're talking about uh, we want each and every money that is, uh, that is posted or given to counties to be audited. Mm. And uh, the audit itself, we are nine years in, into devolution, but we have seen the Auditor General each and every year talking about misappropriated money, talking about um, money that has been used for projects that shouldn't have, but mm. there's nothing that is being done. So <laughs> at the end of the day, we're going to do the forensic audit again. Am I missing <coughs> something here as a Kenyan? You know, Troy, yes. I am a believer of devolution. And I would want to see the devolved system strengthened. The surest way of strengthening devolution is to increase resources and protect those resources. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we get resources to the government institutions and the counties? They must do budgeting, and then they submit that budgeting mm -hmm. to the relevant department, mm -hmm. and then they're taken to parliament for debate, approval, and then appropriation. Yes. That's what Nabulindo and Tim are doing. Mm -hmm. Now, Every four months, mm -hmm. the controller of budget submits a report on the expenditure on how that budget has been implemented. Every four months. Yeah. Recently, when that report came out, you noticed the gaps. What has happened? Money has been used to travel while there are no one traveling. Yes. Money has been used to do certain things, buy mandazi and flowers. And you know, that's what worry as Kenyans. But now, the issue has been the constitutional principle under 
principle of public finance mm -hmm. that public money must be used in a prudent manner. Mm -hmm. That is the law. And if it is not used in a prudent manner, then people must account. The 47 governors, in equal measure, must account for whatever coin they have received since they started receiving it up now. But Sergeant, looking at nine years, the, the same same thing. It is not the first and that's time. What, you, know, you, you, you know why? You know why? Yes. You know why? Yes. We, we, are, we are still talking about it. Yeah. We have not adopted the Auditor General report as part of the prosecution report. The day we start analyzing and including the auditor as the first witness mm -hmm. in economic crime cases mm -hmm. so that we can nail thieves of public money through the auditor general report remember article 229 the audit report shall confirm whether public money has been used lawfully that is the only report that we can rely on mm -hmm. nothing else mm -hmm. so if i Auditor General report reveals that County X misappropriated 360 million or billion. Mm -hmm. Then the DCI can take advantage of that report and they invite the Auditor General mm -hmm. in, in, in the investigation. The ODPP must now start to use that as a piece of evidence and these people can be nailed. Mm -hmm. But having said that, mm -hmm. let's look at it also this way. We know that in this country, the corruption will always fight back. Mm -hmm. So we have seen the type of uh, misappropriation that happened in the county, governors trying to play games here and there, a few have been um, yeah. impeached, mm -hmm. a few are having their days in court. But how do we now uh, stop this problem going forward? Because we have to offer a solution. Mm -hmm. Going forward, and this is what we are suggesting, let's start looking at leaders that we put in office. If you know that you are putting a thief in office mm -hmm. and you expect the thief to protect your money then you are lying to yourself and that's why we start by public engagement mm -hmm. civic education and telling kenyans listen it is a process that starts at the voting booth you read the name they have campaigned you know them by their nature you know them by their lifestyle why would you <coughs> allow somebody who is going to take your money as breakfast to be in that office and then after five years you say nothing has happened he mentioned something of uh, i mean uh, health devolves system mm -hmm. i am very much happy with what i've seen in the national government mm -hmm. in the recent past mm -hmm. if you look at the uh, informal settlements mm -hmm. we have seen the sprouting of level four hospitals mm. we have seen many of them the president has been opening them with the uh, in collaboration with the nms yeah that is what we would want to see in every word imagine the 1450 words of kenya we have a level four hospital imagine imagine in the 1450 words of kenya we have a modern market a modern school a modern dispensary how far much can we develop as a country and that's what the president has been saying to him in this country what is important is peace and development they created an environment where there is peace mm -hmm. now we must create an environment where is the development and as even going forward in politics mm -hmm. we'd want to see a situation where mm -hmm. we take devolution a notch higher mm -hmm. you know the constitution says that the county government and national government will work on mutual cooperation it means that today a function that cannot be adequately mm -hmm. executed by a, count, a county government the national government can come in and that's why you see the transfer function in nairobi county so for what we would want to see going forward a collaboration when bungay uh, nabulindo and okang will be in parliament mm -hmm. god willing mm -hmm. in the next nine months yes. what we'll be pushing for is not only uh, uh, increasing the resources that are going to the, the county in terms of uh, um, um, uh, division of revenue, but also ensuring that we have laws in place that protect those resources that have gone to the county. Okay. And also calling okay. to account mm -hmm. the leaders that have been charged with ensuring that they protect those resources. Because mm -hmm. we have seen an issue where people misappropriate funds and they go scot free yes and actually mm. that's a Sorry. big problem uh, uh, you can uh, yeah. you can add on that on that just a little yes yes mm. yes yes you see uh, kenya uh -huh. the problem as a uh, uh, this says mm. starts sometimes with the voter if it is public knowledge mm -hmm. that a certain individual has been adversely mentioned in corruption issues mm amounted to billions of shillings 
in Kenya, the NYS scandals, the Golden Bag, whatever scandals there are in this country, Kenyans lose a lot of money in billions. Then uh, this individual mm -hmm. presents himself or herself mm -hmm. to the Wanaiji for public office. And actually, sometimes uh, I like social media. We, they go out and tell those voters mm -hmm. that this person you are about to elect is a thief, is corrupt, and don't. And the answers came. He is our thief. Mm -hmm. He is not yours. So you mind your own. Yeah, we've seen leaders being elected despite yes. having. Uh, yes. So uh, voters should stop glorifying corrupt leaders. Voters should stop glorifying people who steal and they come with a lot of money and give them handout and they say it is our own. Mm. Even if he stole, he stole for our sake. They bribe their way into okay. leadership. Yeah. Okay. So yes. leaders, uh, voters, yes. beware. Okay. Mm. Uh, I mean, um, <coughs> you see, I think SG has mentioned something very important. Um, and Mwishmua. Sometimes you ask yourself, mm. must, be you, must you be audited? Must you be followed on public money? I mean, those of us that have traveled all over the world, mm. you know, some of these uh, institutions that you have put as a preventable way of, you know, uh, people not to, to, to steal money. Mm -hmm. In, in some, some, some countries, it is not even there in the first place because there is always... Uh, the individual conviction that you have that you know what I am managing public finance mm -hmm. and therefore it has to go public where it comes now to what we are talking about parliament and, and Mwishimua should be able to we should put legislation that makes sure not only that you, you, you steal but that can prevent you not to touch it mm -hmm. so that when the county assemblies for example you know are there they have allocated certain amount of money to to certain projects that is being done mm -hmm. there is just to go and make sure that has it been done mm -hmm. because the question is you know most of the time we we have seen projects mega projects are being said that they have allocated certain number of billions mm -hmm. okay and tomorrow after that year no project has taken off and the money has gone mm -hmm. we should be asking ourselves where did the money go where are the people <coughs> who are supposed to and there, therefore it comes again to parliament and and the, and the same to the county assemblies they are the ones who are supposed to be very strict on this so that they understand this money was allocated to be done this road what is the 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 road in terms of uh, uh, the category of the road that they are doing what kind of madam we have seen situations i mean i see in in where i've traveled all over this country mm -hmm. you know somebody will say that i'm yes. doing maraming of the road mm -hmm. and you know what they do they go and get just the normal mchanga yes. and just put it on the on the road and they say that i've done the road mm -hmm. why should the voters themselves or the people who are living there agree to have a road should be work done and somebody is going to be paid. These are some of the things that we should be able to look as a country. But as I said again, there comes a time that we have got to have people who are more patriotistic, who are more, they want to make changes in the lives of the Wanainji than themselves. Because there is nothing that I would be proud of as Wilfred Bungay, that I build a big, a huge house today, knowing that my salary cannot even afford to do a big yes, house yes, you know yes. we should be asking ourselves such kind of questions so that we do not as Mushimua says we do not glorify the leaders yes. for what they have been they have stolen uh -huh. yeah. okay of course mm -hmm. and uh, the, the politics and the, the political dramas are slowly but surely picking up pace. <laughs> we have uh, Raila Odinga mountain mm -hmm. and we also have uh, uh, the, the hustler is in the coast uh, the hustler okay. is at the coast <laughs> and uh, they've come up with the two things that we we had hand, we hadn't had before. Of course, uh, DP talking about giving money to people, small businesses, so mm -hmm. that they may uplift them. And we have even uh, the former premier talking about a stipend of around six thousand for for vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, communities. Social it welfare. Practical? Or the social welfare. Is it practical uh, and is it doable? And of course, we've had this this narrative each and every time, mm -hmm. each and every political cycle that comes around. I think what is happening in this country today is very good. And we are going to see the most entertaining transition election that we have never seen before. The conversation has moved, and the conversation is at the heart of Kenyans. How do we secure our melting economy? And that is the conversation. I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. The only challenge I have with some of the proponents is the practicability of the economic models. Because when you say that you want to uplift the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and you want to uplift them by giving them money so that they become at the top mm -hmm. That has been there all along. Mm -hmm. Devolution mm -hmm. was a principle and economic model that reaches to the very bottom. And that's why I have been saying mm -hmm. that the only way, the only economic model that we need in this country is to strengthen devolution. By adopting the word as the primary unit of accelerated, not just development, you mm -hmm. must make it faster. Mm -hmm. So that we start seeing some of these things that the national government is doing in the slum areas, in the, you know, the hospitals, the roads, mm -hmm. must be seen in Ward A joining Ward B joining Ward C. Mm -hmm. We industrialize our villages. Number two, the issue of social welfare. Mm -hmm. Over the world, there are so many countries that are so social welfare states mm -hmm. where the vulnerable, the most vulnerable, are depending on the government to feed them. Mm -hmm. The president told us that we steal two billion every day. And I agree with him mm -hmm. because if you look at the amount of theft in this country, it's actually robbery. And if the president acknowledged that okay. there are certain people mm -hmm. in government that are stealing this money, then look at 6,000 per household. The trial of Dinga is proposing 6,000 per household. Mm -hmm. If you say that there are over 2 million most vulnerable households in this country that require to receive or be cushioned by providing 6,000 shillings mm -hmm. in the interim for whatever period, then that money is less than 100 billion in a year. It is doable. Okay. How much do you still okay only okay. I, I, I mean how much yeah. so uh, the, the other thing that i'm liking in this uh, um, uh, campaign is that for the first time mm -hmm. we are seeing a situation where mm -hmm. we are going to have a real contest mm -hmm. a real contest of ideas not a contest of tribal mobilization or tribal numbers and we must sustain it to that level because it is only until then that kenyans will realize that mm -hmm. we have to vote ideologically not tribally okay. so for me okay. I, 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 I embrace it yes I, 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 I love it yes and, 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 and I would want to encourage every Kenyan yes. to scrutinize the, the, leaders the, 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 the leaders that <laughs> propose this and, 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 and give suggestions where possible as young people yes. we are going to have what is called the young people's manifesto okay. and we shall project okay. it and yes. we shall and, give and, it to and them. I'm quite sure Moshima you want yes. to, to, to and uh, Champ you would want to yes. weigh in on that of course mm. uh, and also our political maturity we're seeing uh, things that we never used to see yes you can traverse any part of the country yes. the, we are largely peaceful you touch on that first things first gentlemen uh, Champ uh, let's uh, weigh in on that uh, something that has come up has come up uh, for the last couple of days and today is still there the Mashuja day the uh, people want uh, the curfew lifted uh, at least uh, there was uh, some suggestion that if there is a region which has uh, high cases or a surge in the COVID-19 numbers then we can zone that area and uh, do the curfew uh, other than the national nationwide curfew absolutely Troy, I can tell you that the best gift that uh, Mashima uh, Uru Kenyatta can give Kenyans is to lift the curfew because I can tell you that uh, you know, for a, a number of days that I've been in Nairobi, for a very long time, you know, Nairobi had become lively. Mm -hmm. And if you look at currently now, you know, it has become a, a quiet town, you know, like our old towns, you know, I, yes. I, I, in the past. Mm -hmm. Because remember this, that, you know, Mm -hmm. In terms of economy, mm -hmm. how many people get affected? If you mm -hmm. look at the Matatus, they have got to close their businesses by eight. If you look at the bars, you know, I mean, it's actually Nairobi, I can tell you that, you know, most of the activities would go on yeah. until almost uh, chair in the morning. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we are really want to change the economy of this country, the way, you know, uh, SG say that, you know, the conversation that is going to be there in, in politics is more of economy. I can tell you that it has to start, you know, with the curfew lifting. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it, you know, I mean, let those counties that we have a problem be the ones that will be restricted. But we are not going to just restrict the entire country. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will come to a halt in terms of uh, development, I can tell you that for sure. Mm -hmm. And then I just wanted to weigh in on, uh, I in terms of what we were just talking about before we went for the break. Yes. That the national politics is number one going to be the most peaceful i can tell you that i come from uh, from the rift mm -hmm. and you can listen to the conversation there that you know if anything that we want in this country is peace what i'm looking for forward to when it comes to national debate mm -hmm. is soberness you know let it be best uh, issue best argument for any leader that is seeking the the higher office uh you know, for, for example, you know, when you're here, uh, because there is something that Troy was trying to the mention, and I don't know what it was, mm -hmm. but when you hear the bottom-up uh, economy, for mm -hmm. example, 
I, I can tell you that myself, when I was running for the parliamentary seat last time, mm -hmm. I said my, my slogan was change from within. Mm -hmm. It means you have got to let every idea that you want to achieve in a constituency, for example, mm -hmm. let it come from the people. Let any development that you're doing be on the people. And I think when it, we are talking about when you, you, you hear uh, he said, the deputy president, for example, you know, talk about bottom-up approach. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that you have got to give money to the person, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, we focus right now most of our resources, the same way we are talking about devolution, mm -hmm. you know, that we focus most of our resources on the on the ground. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it becomes far much better. Of course, I mean, there's all models that people have used mm -hmm. that uh, the up, down yeah. economy, you know, is always working. You get this. If you look at, for example, the Asian tigers, mm -hmm. they, are, they are kind of models that they were using was not, uh, you know, what we have been talking about, the, the top down. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it is a debate that it is allowed to go on and uh, Kenyans will make a choice in terms of uh, what is best for them. Okay. Well, Moshimua, can yes. you weigh in on that? And of course, uh, mm -hmm. what are some of your expectations as we, we need to pick up the pace now? Um, um, for, for the Mashuja. Uh, first, uh, I'll uh, 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 support him in the idea that let the conversation go on. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about these issues. Let them tell us what they have in mind that they want to do for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We are also politicians. We are also going to tell our voters mm -hmm. what we intend to do for them. Mm -hmm. That is the most important thing uh, to the electorate. Mm -hmm. And they should be keen enough to see what is he saying? What will he actually do? And is it implementable or practical according to me what i'm seeing now let me deal with the big ones eh? mm -hmm. uh, yes. for the for this forum yes uh what i'm seeing is what fair tell kind of campaigns mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about bottom up there is nothing at the bottom so what are you going for to, to take from the bottom up? There is okay. nothing at the bottom. These people are suffering. Yeah. There is nothing yeah. there. Uh -huh. So when you say bottom up, what are you taking from bottom up to uplift these people? There's okay. nothing. So uh, maybe we should think about uh, making something be there first before you can, you can take yeah. it uh, from And when up. you talk about uh, uh, 6,000 uh, shillings for Kenyans, mm -hmm. uh, whichever caliber they will, they will be receiving, mm -hmm. we have programs already now. We have this social program for the old. Mm -hmm. it, it has failed. It is not working because of lack of resources. Lack of resources in ports. Mm -hmm. We have programs for the People living the youth, with the disabilities, course, for, the youth, jail, for, for the that. youth, and for the youth, for the that they are not working. That. So why would you come up with other fictitious <laughs> yes. uh, social models yes. when we have already others mm -hmm. that have failed? Okay, and yeah. indeed, uh, the, that's yes. a big, bigger con conversation. But still on the same. Yes, uh, uh, I'm asking this because I know this is something you started, the, the Machinani Initiative. You started before you were a member of parliament. Yes, yes, uh, yes. When you used to work at the Hansard. Yes. So uh, kindly, in 30 seconds. Yes. Has it been able to do something? Yes. No, it's something that you started before you were a legislator. Yes. Machinani Initiative is actually what defined uh, me from the other uh, people who were in the field because I was able to reach someone and change that person's life. So you think it's, it's something that can work in uh, so many constituencies? Yes, uh, uh, it, uh, it works because... Champ and uh, yeah. Fred can borrow a leaf. Yeah, they can borrow a leaf, they can <laughs> talk to me, yes. I can give them the ideas because it's a social kind of idea, mm -hmm. it's non-profit making, mm -hmm. is that when you yourself, mm -hmm. you go to Mashinani mm -hmm. and then you find that old mama mm -hmm. who slept hungry Mm -hmm. and you ask her what you would like uh, to do for her so mm -hmm. that she can change her life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we impose projects on people, but when you talk to this uh, mama or this youth, mm -hmm. she will, they will tell you, my biggest problem mm -hmm. is not even food. My biggest problem is the housing. Okay. okay. Would you want like to, to also the, the curfew lifted tomorrow? As a one Today, of they should lift that curfew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. The curfew should be lifted then, uh, immediately. Uh, uh, we'll yeah. do that and then I'll give you each for, uh, second. Four, four expectations uh -huh. for tomorrow. First of all, uh, I do appreciate uh, what the country is doing to recognize uh, the heroes of this country mm -hmm. and heroes in all sectors and I'm glad today I'm seated here with one of our chums uh, Bungay who is also one of our heroes and congratulations Bungay and Thank I wish you the best in whatever you're doing. Thank you. Tomorrow 
we do expect the president to speak about the Pandora Papers. Remember, he did uh, mm -hmm. promise that when he comes back, he'll speak about it. Yes. And he said that this is a convention that is very good because it's going to put leaders to account, particularly on the that is ill-gotten. Ill mm -hmm. Number two, we do expect the president to talk about the economic status of this country. Mm -hmm. We have seen the effects of COVID, mm -hmm. and it is there that we expect the president should actually de-escalate some of these protocols that have been injurious to the people, particularly mm -hmm. the curfew, mm -hmm. but also we expect Kenyans to continue, you know, uh, still uh, observing the protocols. Then the other thing we do expect that there is likely to be a guest that uh, will require, you know, maybe... Uh, protocol adjustments. Mm -hmm. You know, people are climbing the mountain. Yes. So when you're climbing the mountain, mm -hmm. there are cl mountain climbers that are likely to speak in that in that event, and uh, mm -hmm. that's politics of the day. Okay. But I, I, I also want to ask Kenyans to be very careful mm -hmm. and not only to narrow on the usuals. Mm -hmm. There's a candidate that they need to start thinking about. Mm -hmm. Gideon Moy. Mm -hmm. you remember Gideon Moy launched his... Um, uh, yeah, but, but is, that is in Oka, yeah? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. because he said he's going all the way. Okay. And, and, and Gideon Moya said, mm -hmm. is one of the candidates that have heard say how he's going to deal with corruption. Okay. Because he want to put punitive measures mm -hmm. to ensure that the corrupt are punished severely. Okay. He said that he wants to strengthen devolution. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really picked from that. Mm -hmm. So we want also to see how this convention is going to go okay. post Mashujade. You are the sec gen of uh, Third Way Alliance. Absolutely. Can you answer this question? Eh? Are you going to perhaps merge with Oka? Are you merging with uh, perhaps uh, a former premier? Or Those decisions or? are made by the National Executive Committee. Okay, fine. But a okay. day in politics yes. is a long day. Is a long day. Yes. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Final words. Please. Um, Thank you very much for the, these 30 seconds that yes. you have given me. Mm -hmm. I want to acknowledge Kenyans as heroes. We are seated with a hero here. Mm -hmm. Let me take, uh, extend uh, this word to other Kenyans. Uh, that, that person who wakes up very early in the morning mm -hmm. to go and fend for his or her children. That's a hero. That man who goes with his tools is a hero. That mama who goes to toil for her children is a hero. Okay. Uh, that person who goes to toil for herself is a hero. Right. So uh, I take this opportunity mm -hmm. to wish all heroes yes. uh, a good Mashuja Day tomorrow yes. and especially the people of Matungu. I want to tell them that they are heroes. Indeed. Champ. Yes, the final people, ones, 30 seconds. Yes, the people of Mwen are my heroes, mm -hmm. and I believe you know, majority of them are actually, you know, the, the, the champions that have led this country, you know, they, they come from the same. What I would like to say about, especially tomorrow, being the Mashujate, is at least, you know, Kenyans to give respect to every Kenyan who has brought glory to this country. And I say this not only talking about athletes, mm -hmm. but everybody who has achieved something for the betterment of the society. Indeed. Those are the people that we should recognize as a country mm -hmm. and not necessarily politicians, as much as I'm a politician myself or <laughs> going into politics mm -hmm. but let's focus more on those individuals that have been able to achieve something. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Something I will also commend you on is that you didn't go about, uh, you're an aspirin, aspirant in Emugwen constituency, mm. you're a Kasipur Kabondo aspirant, but you didn't go into campaign constituencies <laughs> and campaign <laughs> mode. We had a sober conversation on Mashuja Day, of course, and the state of nation and politics of the day. And of course, we have been graced by an MP, who is the MP for Matungu, Peter Oscar Naburindo, uh, who is the MP Matungu. Thank you so much, of course, for each and everyone who has made news checker success today including our teams in Mombasa of course we would have wanted some from uh, Kisumu but we will be getting that uh, uh, today and tomorrow and also the Kirinyaga team uh, at the Wanguru Stadium thank you so much and for you the viewer for watching my name is Ben Troinjue and uh, Anne Wangeshi is our current um, a sign language interpreter no Susan Toku apologies for that at about uh, three minutes uh, to the top of the hour we are giving rise uh, to Tamrini and of course uh, Kurunzi Mashinani thank you for watching and have a good one